I'm Carol Reynolds for Wind Notes, and I have the pleasure this morning of speaking with professor, composer, performer, um, amazing musician, Michael Udall, who right now is in Colorado. Good morning, sir. Good morning to you, Carol. We're doing this bright and early in the morning, which suits both of us quite well, I think. Um, musicians don't get to sleep much anyway, do they? <laughs> not, not very much, and my composition schedule is really crazy. I can wake up at one or two in the morning, compose till four, go back to sleep for a couple hours. That's just well, the way it is. Well, you're able to do that now because you've had a long career as a professor of percussion, um, University of Michigan, all kinds of involvement with different ensembles, orchestras, and now you're in this position, I guess it's fair to say, where you have more time to write music, and that's exactly what you're doing, yes? Yes, that was the retirement goal. Well, how's it going? <laughs> is it, well, is very it, well. Uh, I've completed my third opera recently, and uh, I have a new commission uh, coming up, and so uh, life is good. Well, the, the thing that brings us together today is a, an upcoming performance with the Dallas Winds of a piece that will be having its world premiere although it's had a life already within film. And I would just love it if you could tell us anything you, you can share with us about the, the film the piece and what we can look forward to at this. It's a pretty exciting moment. Uh, certainly. And uh, yes, I'm absolutely excited over the moon and thrilled that uh, this unbelievable ensemble the Dallas wins uh, with Jerry Junkin on the podium is going to premiere this work. Uh, it's, it's a dream that this is happening. So uh, I'm very excited and looking forward to the performance. Uh, you all have a long friendship, is that right? If I, I mean, you and Jerry have worked together many times, is that fair? Yes, that's, that's correct. Jerry premiered or, uh, two of my percussion concertos, one for multiple percussion and the other for timpani with the University of Texas uh, wind ensemble at the Percussive Art Society International Convention in San Antonio uh -huh. a few years back. There you go. Well, tell us about this piece. Certainly. Uh, the work is titled Echoes of the Past. And the, the title came about when my wife, Nancy, and I were at uh, visiting the world uh, heritage site, a UNESCO site, uh, Mesa Verde in southwestern Colorado. Uh, I'm sure many of your uh, viewers are aware of Mesa Verde and perhaps have been there. Uh, what's unique about it is the ancestral Puebloan peoples that eventually settled in the eight northern Pueblos in New Mexico uh, date back to 7,500 B.C., in Mesa Verde, uh, archaeologically, they determined that. And due to severe drought in about 1285, the uh, Puebloans moved on from there down into New Mexico where there was more water. Uh, that's what they have determined. Uh, and what's amazing is that these structures built into the, into the walls of caves in the cliff dwellings uh, were virtually, mo many of them impenetrable, and they still stand because of the dry climate. And it's, it's just an amazing sight. So we were on the Weatherall Mesa, there's two mesas, and we were on the Weatherall Mesa, and of course these architectural ancient ruins are amazing in themselves. But what I started to notice as walking from one site to the next were scorched trees burnt from uh, hundreds of years of forest fires on the mesa top due to lightning and so on. And I started to see images in the trees. I'm sure many viewers have looked up at the clouds and seen faces in the clouds and mm -hmm. uh, and perhaps looking at tiles in the floor, you can 
Mm -hmm. um, I'll see images of animals or uh, human form faces. Well, as I was looking at these scorched trees, I became very much aware of images that reminded me of uh, Native American uh, kachinas or uh -huh. human forms, animal forms, or just very interesting shapes. And so I started snapping photos on my phone mm. and it, it, it was amazing. I think I took over a hundred photos of forms that were just thrilling to me. And so I became obsessed with that. <laughs> I must say more than the Pueblo and architecture, which is unbelievable in itself. So I got home and this kind of germinated for about four years. Oh. And I wrote to a, a former roommate of mine from college who was also retired and he's an amateur photographer. And Bob Rosen is his name, uh, came out, drove out from Wisconsin, and we had a reunion trip back to Mesa oh. Verde where I was able to find most of these images and Bob took photographs, photographs of them and we came, I, I came back and in the ensuing months I storyboarded a film of these photographs that I thought would be very interesting to animate so that there's motion where you can uh -huh. initially see the original form and then it would mutate in time to a different shape. And then I would compose music for it. Uh, vice versa could happen where the form started off with an interesting shape and then mutated to its original form of the photograph. So, uh, that's what I proceeded to do. And the film turns out to be about 18 minutes in length. And of course, I don't have the skill to be uh, an animator. So in the same way I needed the help of Bob and his beautiful cameras to photograph this, uh, I employed a, a gentleman named Tal Ormsby who's an animator in Boulder, Colorado, to work with me. So basically, I was the producer and director of the film because I had storyboarded the entire thing and I had everything worked out in terms of how tall would manipulate the images technically. And he had some suggestions as well as we went through it. So it was a true collaboration. And uh -huh. the result is this film that are vignettes of uh, yeah. these images. So the, seeing these forms, which by the way, I did not know that there was a word for this, uh, seeing images in, in clouds and so on. Uh, and it's called, uh, I'm sure you know it, uh, you're a distinguished yeah. professor yourself, uh, uh, periodolia. No, I don't know that. That's wonderful. Say it again. Uh, peri, peridolia. New to me. Uh, I, I just, I, I typed in a search engine, uh, uh, seeing images in clouds. Oh and that's my. what came up. And then it talked about in, in various yeah. tiles, trees, whatever. So uh, wow. it was a new word in my vocabulary, and sometimes I stumble in pronunciation of it, but, but that's how this all began. That, that's a huge story. I mean, I found myself thinking, okay, we're going back now to 
um, you could think about Prokofiev uh, working in Alexander Nevsky with Einstein, Eisenstein, or you know the very idea of putting the c- collaboration in film. And then I found myself thinking back to Wagner, believe it or not, you know, storyboarding everything, coming up with the idea, pulling in the cl- uh, that all of that flashes because you're doing this sort of on top of this deep tradition of the visual and the musical together with this fabulous idea. I mean, that's how it hits me. Okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because people don't, they think, oh, there's a concert st- or there's music or they don't, they watch a film and they don't realize that a big part of why they like it is the music. Yes. Well, hopefully so. Uh, the colors, the timbres, the way the, the music flows in time and supports the visual images is an essential component part for me of reaching out to audiences in this way. Now, the film's done quite well, if I'm not mistaken. You have a, it's, it's garnered a number of awards. Um, yes, uh, uh, surprisingly yeah. to me. <laughs> um, uh, but yes, uh, it, uh, received laurels and awards at um, the Liftoff Global Network in Tokyo in 2022, uh, the Picasso Einstein Buddha International Film Festival in uh, India, uh, Independent wow. Shorts in LA, and Hollywood uh, Verge Film Festival, and New York City's Sound and Vision International Film and Technology Festival, and the uh, oh, just just a just a number of uh, festivals. Uh, the Tagore International Festival in Bengal, Las Vegas. Uh, All right, <laughs> Asheville, and so on. So uh, uh, I feel very fortunate. Well, that's just so wonderful because something you're taking a walk in a beautiful place with your wife, seeing something extraordinary. And then look at the, the arc to this. And now there's a new life because this, you, you've taken the music. Tell us how, what you did to take the music because it's going to be a concert piece with the world premiere at the Dallas Winds just in not many days. So how, how does it get from that film to the concert stage for the Dallas Winds? Yes. Well, I, I I could imagine the the sound of the wind on these mesas and in the and going through the Pueblo and structures. And so wind instruments were a very natural uh, sense to me for this composition initially, as well as percussion because uh, well I just had a premiere of uh, in April of the new concerto, and it's called Ancient Echoes. So I've confused people because there's this film, Echoes of the Past, and then this other concerto, Ancient Echoes. But Ancient Echoes was created because in southern, uh, southeastern Colorado, near Alamosa, is the Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve. And an archaeologist from our town in Colorado, Longmont, discovered that in the museum there, they had, they didn't know what they were, but they had ancient stones that had been chiseled and chipped, but they knew it was not a matate or mono for grinding corn because they were a bit too large for that. I mean, you wouldn't want a three pound mono. <laughs> uh, so what, uh, what she determined because of sites in Paris and around the world were these were ancient lithophones or stones that made sound. Oh. And so uh, this concerto Ancient Echoes is actually the uh, base on these stones. And I built a three octave lith- uh, stone instrument uh, tuned to Western scale uh, from uh, absolute black granite Indi- uh, uh, granite from India uh, as part of one of the central components of this of that work. So anyway, I, I could imagine percussion and winds because of 
the Puebloan people making matates and, and monos and playing lithophone sounds as maybe they were up on the mesa looking up at the vastness of the stars at night and the wonderment of it all. So mm -hmm. in, in composing this work, those, that was the essential component. And after it was composed, I could think of absolutely no better situation than contacting Jerry Junkin to see if he was mm -hmm. interested in this work. Oh, yes. So very, very fortunately, he was. And here we are. Oh, today. no. I think the fortunate ones will be the Dallas audience and the musicians who love, you know, that ensemble is just, A, it's fabulous, but they just, they can't get enough of, of new challenges and new visions and something that is, in this case, just combining so many influences and so many experiences. It's we used to say it's rich. OK, it's rich <laughs> like a sauce. Right. Um, wow. And will there be any visual uh, presentation during the piece? Just out of uh, do you know? Oh, well, the film will be shown as the music uh -huh. is being played. So uh, as with the other three works on the program, uh, there'll be uh, I, I understand there'll be vis visual images, maybe not uh motion picture all the time, but maybe slides or whatever. Uh, I'm not sure about that uh, element of it in the other works, but in this work, the film will be shown in its entirety while the music is being played live by the Dallas Wings. That's terrific. That would put a smile on anybody's face, especially, I imagine. I mean, that's perfect, isn't it? That's exactly what you would like to have happen. A absolutely. A, a total corporeal experience for the audience uh, is, is the goal. And I, I really hope that there's a spinoff from it that make people think and be more aware of their surroundings, uh, not just in, their, uh, in an architectural sense or in a cityscape sense, but also in a human sense of what's going on in the world beyond art itself and the, the majesty of the human existence and how essential it is to protect it. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Well, that is wonderful to hear. I know it's coming up very soon. Um, I just thank you for sharing that. I, I hope the experience will be to be there in the Meyerson. It's amazingly beautiful structure in and of itself where you'll be surrounded by beauty before you ever hear a note. And then your film and then these players and Jerry conducting and you will be able to be there. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm flying in that day. Uh, and uh, I'm sure I'll be on pins and needles with absolute excitement. Well, I look forward to seeing you and seeing you afterwards and getting a chance to meet you in person. And um, I just thank you for making the time that we could talk about it. I, I hope everyone is there and I hope there'll be many, many opportunities for this piece to, to fly, if you will, to, well, because you brought this whole thing to life. That's what you did. You brought it to life. Well, thank you, Carol. I, I, I'm just so pleased uh, to meet you and to oh. be able to share with people who might potentially come to the concert. I hope they will and, and enjoy the entire program and this really terrific ensemble. Okay. Well, very good. Thank you, sir. And see you soon at the concert. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, ciao for now.